received by the Holy Ghost. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and in the hour of our death. Amen. Behold the handmaid of the Lord, be it done unto me according to thy word. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and in the hour of our death. Amen. And the Word was made flesh, and dwelt among us. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and in the hour of our death. Amen. Pray for us, O Holy Mother of God, that we may be made worthy of the promises of Christ. Let us pray. O forth, we beseech thee, O Lord, thy grace into our hearts, that as we have known the incarnation of thy Son, Jesus Christ, by the message of an angel, so by his cross and passion may we come to know the glory of his resurrection, through the same Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. In nome de Patris e Filii e Spiritu Sancti, Amen. In Tuoi volatari de e de impeditifica, e Giugo Tutum, Eum. Giurica Mene, se adicione casa mem de gente non sancta, e benomine, e ne condolo soro. Quae tuus Deus, foti tuum mea, quare repidisit, quare tristis in cielo, dum affligi medicus. E mi te lucem tuum elevatem tuum, imsi un edus, sel de rutet ser, ultim ontum sanctum tuum in tabernacola tua. Eit in tuoi volatari Dei, in den veritifica, giuven tutum eum. Compite putib in citera, Deus Deus meus, quae tristis anima mea, in quare putovas me. Sperem Deo, quare mai fa compite putini, salutare vultus me, e Deus meus. Gloria, Patri, Filio, et Spiritui Sanctus, si coderat in principio, e nunc et sempre. Et in secula seculorum. Amen. In troi volatari Dei, et Dei veritifica Giuvum tutum meum. Auditorium nostri nomine Domini, qui fecit cenum et terra. Confitio Domini potenti, via Tua Maria Santissima, via Trinitaria Eterna, in nome di Tua Maria Fice, Santi Fossi, Spettro e Toro, via Tua Maria Maria e Tia, in nome di Tua Santi Fossi, Spettro e Toro, Qui ho potuto avvenire mi sposo razione, mi ho potuto avvenire mi ho colpa, mi ho colpa, mi ho massima colpa. E io prego per la tua madre, io mi sento di vita, mi ho potuto avvenire 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 mi Confiti, O Deo Onipotenti, inviati Maria, Sempre Vigini, inviati Megani, Arcangelo, inviati Ioani, Battista, Santi Sepostri, Spettro, et Paolo, Uomini, Tu Santi, Siti di Pate, Qui ho portato a venire, scogitazione, bevo ed opere, Meo culpa, meo culpa, meo maxima culpa. E io prego, beata Maria, Sempre Vigini, inviati Megani, Arcangelo, inviati Ioani, Battista, Santi Sepostri, Spettro, et Paolo, Omne Santo, Sete Pate, Ora le promè, Domino Deo nostro. Misericordia tu vesci in impotenza, se usi di misericordia, se vesci in spedute, e guarda se vita, metta in nome. Amen. Lugenza, mi sono sione, metto in missione, perché torno a suore, non ti più, e non mi sono impotente, misericordia, Domino. Amen. Deo, se tu vesci, se vesci, vita, vista, e plenso, tu ne tavi, tu in te. Consente, non mi sto, mi misericordia, e tua. E salutare, tu, un Deo nostro. Domino, esauri, azione, me ha. E clamo, me se te vede. Domino, suo visco, et cum spirito tuo. Ordemus. Me ex pete venunt, peccator, Jesus pete venunt, me testimonia tua, Domine, intellecti, omnis consumationis fidi finem, latum and datum tuo minis, beati immaculati in via, qui ambulant in legge Domine, Gloria, Padre e Figlio, et Spiritu e Santo, si godera tu principio, e nunc et sempre, et in secula seculorum. Amen. Me ex pete venunt, peccator, ne esus pete venunt me, testimonia tua, Domine, intellexi, omnis consumationis fidi finem, latum et datum tuum minus. Kyrie eleison, Kyrie eleison, Kyrie eleison, Christa eleison, Christa eleison, Christa eleison, Kyrie eleison, Kyrie eleison, Kyrie eleison. Gloria in excelsis Deo, et in terra pax hominibus bone voluntatis, laudamus te, benedicimus te, adornamus te, glorificamus te, 
Grazie da ci musti pi prote ma con gloria tua. Domine Deus, Rex Celestis, Deus Pate non di potenza. Domine Filo Unigenita in Gesù Cristo. Domine Deus, Onius Dei, Figius Patris. Qui tolli speccato mundi in miserere nobis. Qui tolli speccato mundi in susci per interpretazione nostra. Qui se residex in patris, miserere nobis. Gloriam tu solus Sanctus, tu solus Dominus, tu solus Altissimus, Gesù Cristo. Con Santo Spirito in gloria dei Patris. Amen. Ex vobis et cum Spirito tu. Ordemus. Indulgenziam nobis Christus Domine, Beata Dorotea Virgo et Mater in Flore, Que qui vi gratis et merit merito castitatis, et tue professione vetutis. Per Domino nostro, mi hai su Cristo un figlio in tu, mi dai con gruda regna ad un'eredità di Spirito Santo Deus, per la mia secula seculorum. Amen. Ordemus. Deus qui salutis a eterne, beate. Angeli nos fermus tuos quaesmus, Amen, Deus, perpetuo e mentis e corporis, sanitate gardere, et gloriose beate marie e sempre vicine senza cessione, e presenzi liberali tristizia, ed eterne perfum letizia. Ecclesia tuoi Christ, mus domine precis peccatus ad mite, ut istruxis ad visi sassi posse de moribus une besti, secoli tibi servi et libitate. Per Dominum nostrum, mi hai su Christ un figlio in tuum, qui te cum vivta regna ad une netta di Spiritus Sancti Deus, per Romia secula seculorum. Amen. Lexo Libri Sapiensia. Domine Deus meus, exultasti subeteram habitationem meam, et promote de fluente te precatus sum. Invocavi Dominum Patrem Domini mei, un onde relinquant vendi in tribulationis mei, et in tempore superborum sine adutorio. Laudabo noven tuam esidue, et calaudabo e ilur in confessione, et exaudita res oratio mea, et liberasti mei de petitioni, et erucuisti mei de tempore iniquo, Protergi e confitevur in laudem dicam tibi, Domine Deus nostre. Neo gratias. Adjuvabit eam Deus voltus su, Deus in medio eus non como bebitur, Luminis in petus letificat civitatem Dei, Sanctificavit abonaculum suum altissimus. Alleluia, alleluia, Ec es virgo sapiens, Et una de numero prudentum. Alleluia. Dominus Vobiscum, e cum Spirito Tuo, sequenzia Sancti Evangelii, secundum et Deum, gloria a Tibi Domine. In ino tempore, dixit Iesus discipulis suis parabolum hang, simile est regnum celorum causarum abscondito in acro, quem qui in venit homo abscondite pre gaudio ilius fagit, et vendit universi que habet et emet acro amigum. Iterum simile est regnum celorum homini negoziatori, quer lenzi bonus margaritas, Inventor autem una preziosa materita abiet e vendidit omnia, que habuit e demit eam. Iterum simili est regum celorum, sagine misse in mare, et ex omni genere piscium congreganti, quam com in plede reis e deducentes, et secus licus e dentes, e ligeorunt bonus in vassa, malus autem fores misemum. Si cedet in consumazioni seculi, exibunt angeli et sperabunt malus et de medio justorum, et miten Deus in caminum ignis, e via li fretus est in odensium. Intellexistis haec omnia? Dicunt ei, etiam, etilis. Ide o omnis scrive doctus in regno celorum similis est homini pater familias, e profete causarum sur nova et vetra. Nas, tibi Christi. It's the feast of Saint Dorothy or Dorothea, Virgin Martyr of Caesarea. 
the book, the lesson is taken from the book of Ecclesiasticals. It was thou, O Lord my God, that hadst prospered my life on earth. And now when I prayed to be delivered from the death that was ready to overwhelm me, I made my plea to the Lord, my own master's father. Would he leave me unaided when I was in distress, when my enemies were triumphing over me? I will extol thy name unceasingly with grateful praise. My prayer did not go unregarded. Thou didst rescue me from deadly peril, didst save me in the hour of defeat. Shall I not give thanks? Shall I not praise thee, O Lord our God? And the Holy Gospel is the continuation of that according to St. Matthew. At this time, Jesus told this parable to his disciples. The kingdom of heaven is like a treasure hidden in a field. A man has found it and hidden it again, and now for the joy it gives him, is going home to sell all that he has and buy that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is as if a trader were looking for rare pearls. And now he has found one pearl of great cost, and has sold all that he had and bought it. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a net that was cast into the sea, and enclosed fish of every kind at once. When it was full, the fishermen drew it up and sat down on the beach, where they stored all that was worth keeping in their buckets, and through the useless kind of way. So it will be when the world is brought to an end. The angels will go out and separate the wicked from the just, and will cast him into the furnace of fire, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Have you grasped all this? Yes, Lord, they said to him. And he said to them, Every scholar then whose learning is of the kingdom of heaven must be like a rich man who knows how to bring both new and old things out of his treasure house. Ave Maria, grazie plena Dominus tecum, bene benedictus tu mulieribus e benedictus sucus ventis tu Iesus. Santa Maria, Mater Dei, ora pro nobis peccatoribus, nunc et in ali motis nostre. Amen. In nome di Christ, Filii e Spiritus Sancti. Amen. Carissimi, beloved in Christ, welcome to this broadcast mass as we said on this, the feast of Saint Dorothy, or Dorothea, Virgin and Martyr of Caesarea in Cappadocia. Uh, the modern city uh, still uh, bears that ancient name, though in Turkish it is uh, Kayseri, and uh, it is located in central Anatolia, so actually literally right in the middle of Turkey. According to tradition, St. Dorothy or Dorothea uh, was uh, a, a, a woman of noble birth, uh, who was discovered uh, to be a Christian and was brought uh, for trial and sentencing to the governor Sericius or Sericius. She was uh, uh, given the opportunity uh, to renounce her faith in Christ and uh, burn uh, incense before uh, an idol, uh, but this she refused and uh, declared herself uh, a consecrated virgin to Christ. She said that uh, uh, on her way to trial or at the trial, uh, a chap called uh, Theophilus uh, mocked her, uh, saying to her, uh, bring me uh, fruit from the garden of bliss uh, that you think you are going to. And after being uh, racked and still refusing to renounce Christ, she was sentenced to death. And whilst awaiting the execution, an angel appeared to her with a basket of three apples and three roses, which she commanded the angel to take to Theophilus. Theophilus was uh, apparently uh, in his garden uh, with a friend, continuing to mock the saint, when a young man appeared to him with the basket of fruit and roses and said to him, these are from Dorothy and the Garden of Bliss. So moved and uh, so moved was Theophilus that he immediately declared Christ as God and thereupon of course himself was tortured, arrested, tortured and died a martyr for Christ. All this said to have occurred around 311 AD, toward the end of the persecution begun by Diocletian. We reflected yesterday on the feast 
of Saints Agatha, Virgin and Martyr of Rome. Upon the nature of divine charity, of sacrificial love, and of its manifestation uh, in our Christian lives, especially with regard to issues of sex and sexual morality. We reflected on how uh, chastity itself is indeed a great act of sacrifice on our part. We all of us, my brothers and all, all most of us, uh, uh, understand uh, what uh, sex is and what uh, uh, sexual intimacy is. And most of us, if we were honest, would have to say that we are, are infected by that lustful concupiscence uh, that uh, clouds or uh, veils our appreciation of the world, but particularly of each other in a sexualized way. And we reflected how, as Christians, uh, we are called, if we're not necessarily called to a life of avowed celibacy, and certainly if we're not called to a life of faithfulness in uh, charity, in holy matrimony, then we are certainly, each and every one of us, called to a life of sacrificial chastity as an expression and a way of living in love with God and with each other. Now, another aspect to this is the way in which charity should enable us to regard the other appropriately as children of God. We as Christians, my brothers and sisters, should be able to look at other people and not as the world does, i.e. not then to sexu sexualize them or objectify them in some way, certainly not uh, to regard them lustfully, but instead to see them with the eyes of faith and recognize that they are made like us in the image and likeness of our God, to recognize and to see them for a child of God. Now this language, my brothers and sisters, should be helpful to us. It should be helpful to us to remember to think of others as children of God. To remember to, uh, when we behold someone, to remind ourselves that we are beholding a child of God. And of course, Connotations of innocence and purity and, of course, chastity come to mind when we think of children. That is why uh, we call uh, paedophilia uh, or hemophilia, why we call them perversions. Because they distort what ought to be the uh, natural appreciation of children, not as sexual beings or sexualized objects, but... Uh, as, as children, as young consciences. Remember what our Lord says about those who harm young consciences. It were better for them that a millstone were hung around their neck. And most of us, Deo gratias, most of us are able to, uh, are, are able to recognise children as children. But the sadness, the great sadness is, of course, that some among us are not able to do so. This has caused uh, uh, great pain and suffering uh, and hardship for many, sadly, even within the church. We know, of course, who can possibly be ignorant of all that has come to light uh, uh, in the uh, Catholic Church uh, in recent years. But the same is sadly true of other confessions as well, of other Christian denominations, where a minority, praise God, a minority of men and women have unfortunately failed and indeed have harmed young consciences, who indeed did not see and recognise the innocence and purity 
and chastity of youth or of innocent child uh, of, of the innocence of childhood, um, but rather sought uh, to, to be smirched and despoiled. But actually, in some ways, my brothers and sisters, we none of us ought uh, to think ourselves better who fall foul of uh, thinking in a similar way of adults. It is a great shame, my brothers and sisters, that innocency, that purity, that chastity, that virginity is so little regarded in our contemporary age, that it is so little regarded by society at large. It is a great shame that our young people <coughs> um, are obsessed with sexuality and sexualizing themselves, and indeed are only too keen in popular culture to despoil themselves. And while, as we have reflected before, these are, you know, natural urges, as people are wont to say, we ought also to remember that not all that is natural is necessarily good. So often we hear people say, quoting Genesis, and God made this and <coughs> saw that it was good. Well, yes, indeed, in the first uh, moments of creation, all that God had created was good. It was inherently good. But then, of course, it became spoiled. Spoiled by the fall. Spoiled by sin. So that the natural order in our world today is not as it had been originally intended. As wondrous and as glorious as uh, the handiwork of God is that we can see and appreciate in the natural world around us even so, it is what we see is a pale version a corrupted version, all of it marred by death. Beautiful things grow and bloom and then sadly die. But when first created in the Garden of Eden, all these things had an immortal or an eternal nature to them. And when the new heaven and the new earth come, when we are changed from this corruptible into an incorruptible form or mode of existence, so we will enjoy again what God had originally intended for humanity to enjoy. Eternal life, immortality. But until such, until such time, we are here living, uh, those who are baptised, as exiles, exiled citizens from the kingdom of God. Living in this world which is imperfect, and ourselves living and coping with and enduring an imperfect existence, but one which we are able to endure because of the light of Christ, because of the work of restoration and reconciliation of Creator with Created, begun and worked by Christ in his ultimate sacrifice of love upon the cross. For in him who was the perfection of the image and likeness of God, that is the mystery of the Incarnation, restores within himself, has begun the restoration of what God had originally intended for us to experience and to live. And those of us who hear the gospel of good news, who respond with love for love, we who then pursue after righteousness, right living with God, 
those of us who pursue after holiness, those of us who pursue after the manifestation of God's love in us and for us, begin within ourselves that process of restoration and reconciliation which will be fully realised when the new heaven and the new earth come, when the kingdom of God is realised. But with that promise, with that our Christian hope, are we able to endure in this life? All the pains and tribulations and dichotomy that is the human experience or is the earthly experience at the present time. This constant battle between our spirit and our physical, both of which will of course be restored and reconciled in the new heaven and the new earth, but which in the meantime we might seek to reconcile within ourselves in this life. So that we may experience for ourselves something of the life to come and may bear witness to others something of the life to come. And the way we do this is by putting on Christ, by striving to become Christ-like, by striving to manifest within our lives the right way of thinking, the right way of seeing, the right way of feeling. And we can only achieve this by cooperating with God's grace, by availing ourselves of God's grace, by continually living with our hearts and our minds open to God's grace, and by applying ourselves and cooperating with his grace. This is not a work of reconciliation within ourselves that we can achieve by ourselves, but only with God's grace. And this grace is afforded to us, particularly, of course, in the restorative sacraments, as we said yesterday, of penance and Eucharist, through which, despite our fragility, despite our weakness, despite our failings, we can be restored, healed and forgiven. We can have the slate made clean. We can begin again. We can strive again to live with innocence, in purity, in chastity, in true charity. Frequent recourse to the sacrament of penance frequent reception of the Most Holy Eucharist, the sacrament of Christ's love. Itself the manifestation of that unicity in charity with the Trinity that is ultimately our destination and the purpose of our life and God's will for us. To become one with him, in him, and that through him and by him, by the wondrous working of the sacraments of grace in our lives, by the constant gift of his loving kindness and mercy poured upon us, through the gift of the Holy Ghost and the gifts of the Holy Ghost, to discern and to learn and to grow and to develop in grace. So that we might one day be greeted as Our Lady herself was by the Archangel. Hail thou who art full of grace, the Lord is with thee. And for as sure as Our Lady was an ark of the covenant, carrying in her womb the mystery of the incarnation of Emmanuel God with us. So too, my brothers and sisters, is the hope and desire for us 
so to do when we have received and communed with God in the Holy Eucharist. It is meant to change and to transform us into living temples of the Spirit of God. As we said the other day, we, my brothers and sisters, by virtue of our baptism, have been ordained and set apart by God for God. We who have been acknowledged and accepted and recognised as children of God. Who have been made anew in Christ. Through our baptism. We then who have become holy people. A royal priesthood to serve our God. We forget, perhaps, my brothers and sisters, that we who have been baptised, we who frequently receive the sacraments of grace, have become like those sacramentals which we otherwise revere and treat respectfully. Holy water, blessed crucifixes, blessed candles, blessed ashes and palms, consecrated chalices, unblessed vestments, these things which we know and recognise to have been made holy and set apart for the service of God, we treat with great respect. But so often we forget that we too are ourselves holy vessels. We too ourselves have been blessed and set apart to be instruments of of God's will and purpose. That we have been changed and transformed, that we are not just ordinary human beings, but we have been made citizens of heaven. That we have begun the process of sanctity by being sanctified. And this, my brothers and sisters, should inform our consciences, should affect the way in which we regard ourselves, so that we do not so easily give in to our base natural instincts and carnal desires, but rather hold ourselves in check, preventing ourselves from defiling that which has been made holy. That which has begun the process of perfecting the image and likeness of God within us. So often we forget as Christians that our souls, our lives, our bodies are no longer our own but belong to God, sanctified by him, deliberately to be used and employed in his will, for his will and purpose. And as we've said before, what is his will and purpose? What is it we pray for in the Pater Noster, in the Our Father? Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Thy will. And what is God's will? But the salvation of souls. That everyone should know of his love for them. That everyone should know they exist because of his love. That they are an extension and a manifestation of his love. Of that charity that binds the Trinity in unity. Of that energy of purity, of selflessness and sacrifice that had to create the universe in order to share its love. We 
we, my brothers and sisters, as Christians, should have a wholly different mindset and approach to the understanding of our lives, of ourselves, and of our, our purpose. For being baptised, we have now no identity of our own, but Christ's. As the Apostle says, it is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. We now live not for ourselves, but for God. We now live not for our will, but for God's. If anyone would be a disciple of mine, let him first deny himself, take up his cross, deny himself, submit, subdue, surrender, forget his own will and replace it with God's. Recognise that his life from this moment onwards is lived for God, belongs to God, is given to God. To take up his cross, to manifest and bear sacrifice, sacrificial love. The cross symbolising the divine charity for the ultimate manifestation of God's love in Christ revealed upon it. So our individual crosses are themselves our own sacrifices that we are bid to embrace who would follow him, who would follow Christ, who would follow his example. Who should begin to live and see the world as he saw it and as he sees it and as he intended it and as he desires it to become. So that we look at other people and we see and recognise them as children of God, with the potential to know that they are children of God, with the potential to experience God's love for them, to embrace his love for them, and be changed and transformed by his love for them with that same love, recognising that they are manifestations and expressions of his love, that they exist because of his love, with the intention that they might become his love, and ultimately become then one with him, who is love. That we should regard and see each other as saints, as holy vessels, temples of the Holy Spirit, consecrated, ordained, set apart, blessed, sanctified. holy tools, vessels and instruments of God's will, manifesting his love, revealing something of what will one day be of that new heaven and new earth and of that resurrected life. By ourselves, living in such wise as to make manifest a new way of living in Christ. Each of us daily conforming to God's will, conforming to God's law, by willingly sacrificing our will for his. See, my brothers and sisters, it is for this that Dorothy or Dorothea and Theophilus and all the martyrs and saints before us gave their lives for. This is how they understood their lives as Christians. Why so often we hear that they embraced martyrdom. Because they knew that in their sacrifice 
they will be united with him. My brothers and sisters, the time is surely coming where we will experience a greater persecution than that was meted out by the Ecclesian. The time is surely coming when we as Christians should be steeling ourselves to be prepared to bear witness, to bear witness in the same manner gloriously once again as those martyrs of old. Some of us, even now, have been pressed upon and called upon to make that sacrificial witness. Brothers and sisters in Christ, in the Middle East and in Africa and in Asia, already enduring great persecution, already enduring martyrdom. And the same is coming our way here in the West. Are you ready? Are you prepared? Do you understand? Do you believe the kingdom of God to be worthy of your life? Will you make the ultimate sacrifice Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Dominus Oviscum et cum Spirito Tuo. Orde Diffusen est gratia in labiis Tuis, propelia benedicite Deus in eternum, et in seculum seculum.
terram ia secula seculorum. Amen. Nominus obiscum et cum spirito tuo, sosum corda, habemus et dominum, gracias et amus, domino Deo nostro, dignum et justum est, bene dignum et justum est, et come salutare nos tibi sempre et ubi, quae gracia tagere, domine sancte parte, et omnipotens et terre Deus, et Christum dominum nostrum, et come est stato in tuum laudet angeli adorando benazione estremo tua testate, est celi cerunque vettute de beate serve, fin soci sotazione con celebra, con cui vos a nostri svolci tutti mi ti uveste e precamur, supplici confessione di cerca. Salfus, 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 Dominus Deus Sabaoth, plenis un celi et terra, gloria tua, Hosanna in excelsis. Benedictus qui venit in nomine Domini, Hosanna in excelsis.
Robert Scott foi pecatório. Romia secula seculorum Ah, ordem Precepti salutaribus moniti Divinus nozione formati Ordemus dice Pater nostri di cui esim cei Di sanctificetum nomum tuum Nel veri al regnum tuum Filtro l'ontras tua Sicut in cielo e in terra Pane nostro in quotidiano Tu nobis hodie Limita in nobis Debita nostra Sicula nostri mitimus Debitoribus nostris Prendenus in ducas In tentazione de libra nossa mano. Erro mi assicura assicurorum. Amen. Herzo Domini si sempera vopisco e cum spirito tuo. Ece agnus Dei, ece qui tolet peccatum mundi. Domine, non sum dignus ut intre sotectum meo, set antum dec verbo et sen nabitur anima meo. Domine, non sum dignus ut intre sotectum meo, set antum dec verbo et sen nabitur anima meo. Domine, non sum dignus ut intre sotectum meo, set antum dec verbo et sen nabitur anima meo. 
Brothers and sisters watching Mass online and unable, therefore, to receive the Blessed Sacrament, we invite you now to make an act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that Thou art present in the Blessed Sacrament. I love Thee above all things, and I desire Thee in my soul. Since I cannot now receive thee sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. As though thou wert already there, I embrace thee and unite myself wholly to thee. Permit not that I should ever be separated from thee. Amen. Dominus obiscum et cum spirito tuo. Orde.
ni vini muto di slashitati sassiasti quais mustavene deus naste. Ut in decedent e beate Dorotea vegine et martire tua, in eus sempre participazione vivamus. Per Dominum nostrum Jesum Christum filium tu, qui tecum vivitare in altum in etati spiritus santi deus, per omnia secula seculorum. Amen. Orde bus. Mundi da mundi a nos quaesimus Domini divini sacramenti munus sublatum, et in decedente beate vigine in dei genetice Maria, con beato Iosef, beatis apostolis, suis Petro et Paolo, et quae beatis cut mani fin filies et Dominus Santis, a cum tis nos vede de professasi si vos ex beatos, e de pesisasi vos ex veditos. Pais nos domine Deus naste, ut vos divine tribuis participatione cadere, humanis nos sinus abia celi periculis. Per Dominum nostrum, Iesum Christum filium tu, qui te cum vivida regnatum in etati Spiritus Santi Deus, per omnia secula seculorum. Amen. Dominus Obiscum, et cum Spirito Tuo, ite misa est Deo Grazia. Sit nomen Domini Benedictum, ex hoc nunc dusque in secula, audut orum nostrum in nomine Domini, cui feci celem et eram, benedicat vos omnipotens Deus. Pater et Filius, et Spiritus Sanctus. Amen. Nominus Obiscum, et cum Spirito Tuo, initium Sancti Evangelii, secundum Giovannem, Gloria et Divi Domine. In principio, ele quebum, et quebum, ele tabudeum, et Deus ele quebum, hoc erat in principio acudeum, omni primsum factus sunt, e simsum factum, is nihil quo factum est. In iso vita erat, e vita erat, lux hominum, lux et tenebris, luce et tenebre, e non comprehenderum. Quoi tomo misto se deve fornire meno la più male, se il venite testimoni, il buon testimoni vi pere tu lume, e donna spetta non ferire. Donne le tiri lux e lo testimoni vi pere tu lume, e le lux vere qua lumina tomne e mohomine e veniente min hoc mundum. E mundo e lant, mundus prebsum factus est e mundus non cognovi, di propri e veniti son non riceperum. Qual quod alta e non riceperum te em des forestati in filios te e fieri che ispitrenti in nomine eus. Qui non li sanguini bus nex voluntati calis, nex voluntati viris e nex deonati sunt. Et verbo carum factum est, et habitavit in nomis e vidi nos gloria, e meus gloria, e nos gloria, e nos genetri e pati, per un grazia e veritatis. Deo grazias. Amen. 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 Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and in the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and in the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and in the hour of our death. Amen. Hail, Holy Queen, Mother of Mercy. Hail, our life, our sweetness, and our hope. To thee do we cry for man is children of Eve. To thee do we set up our sighs, mourning and weeping in this veil of tears. Turn then, most gracious advocate, thine eyes of mercy toward us, and after this our exile, show unto us the blessed fruit of thy womb, Jesus. O clement, O loving, O sweet Virgin Mary, pray for us, O Holy Mother of God, that we may be made worthy of the promises of Christ. Let us pray. O God, who art our refuge and our strength, through thy mercy on thy people who cry to thee, and by the intercession of the glorious and blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, St. Joseph, her spouse, of thy blessed Apostles Peter and Paul, and of all thy saints, in mercy, goodness, hear our prayers for the conversion of sinners and for the liberty and exaltation of our Holy Mother, the Church. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Holy Michael, Archangel, defend us in the day of battle. We are safeguard against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke the sacred heart of Jesus. Have mercy upon us. May St. Dorothea, Virgin and Martyr, pray for us. St. Catherine of Steny, pray for us. St. Wilfrid of York, pray for us. St. Richard of Chichester, pray for us. St. Louina of Alfreston, pray for us. St. Willibrod of Utrecht, pray for us. Our Lady of Walsingham, pray for us. Our Holy Guardian Angels, pray for us. Our Heavenly Patron Saints, 
pray for us. Our Lady Queen of Heaven, all the angels and saints, pray for us. Thank you. 